Hi guys, today I'm going to do a quick video on how to monitor your cloud solution locally in your IT infrastructure. So if you have a hybrid environment where you have part of your servers running in a cloud solution like Amazon Web Services EC2 and some of it's lo running locally in your local infrastructure, you want to monitor these servers in the cloud to make sure they're properly um, being serviced and properly up, the services are running, that the end user should be able to access the services they need, and just keep watching. I'll show you how to use Nagios and a specific Nagios plugin for monitoring cloud solutions. So running a hybrid cloud is becoming really popular. It's a very cost-effective way to run services temporarily in your environment that you might need just for a special project or for some beta testing. So being able to monitor these services is really important. So just keep watching. I'll show you guys how easy it is to get started monitoring these services in your IT infrastructure. The first thing I do is I go into Amazon Web Services and I created an instance. You might already have instances running that you want to monitor. So I created a test instance for this uh, demo here. So I'm just having that start up. I'm going to make sure that I'm able to log in and everything. So if you're doing this a test environment, I might make another video about Amazon Web Services. It's a great product. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at CloudWatch. CloudWatch is their utility to monitor the performance of your instances and your storage. So if you click on EC2 at the bottom there, you can kind of look at my single instance I just created. And then you can look at the metrics names. So that's what we're going to be using later on when we use the CloudWatch API in with the Ruby script. After that, you want to make sure the CloudWatch monitoring is enabled. By default, it is enabled, so you don't have to necessarily worry about that. You can disable it. Um, I believe there is a small fee. Amazon does charge for that, so just so you're aware, you want to make sure if you're worried about the cost that you take a look at that. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our uh, Nagios plugin that we're going to use. This one is a Ruby script specifically used to use the Amazon Web Services CloudWatch API. It's actually very easy to set up. It's a great thing to be able to monitor your instances, make sure your performance and everything is working properly. And it has a number of matrix, um, Amazon Web Services CloudWatch matrix that you can use this API with. So one of the things we can do is monitor the EC2. That's the computing, uh, elastic block storage, and RDS is rational database services. So if you run like MySQL, this API will, um, this plugin will work for all of those um, Amazon Web Services. So it kind of has some instructions here. It has the review if you want to read some comments people wrote about it, um, positive comments. So this is why I selected this product to monitor web instances. So I'm going to go ahead and download. Um, the four files are tiny text files, they're configuration files, sample files, and of course the Ruby file. So we're going to go ahead and download that, and we're going to be using them throughout the video. So I went ahead and put it in my downloads folder. And um, once we do that, you're able to go in and we're going to be running these scripts shortly, so you want to make sure you know where you put them. The next step is to install the latest version of Ruby. I found that worked the best. It caused the least amount of issues. So I went ahead and I'm going to download the source code. I found that was better than working with the pre-compiled binaries that you would get using like AppGet or Yum. So I went ahead and went to the Ruby website, ruby-lang.org, and I downloaded the latest that were released at the time, it was 2.3.1. And I get them, this is going to be a very traditional way of compiling code. If you compiled any source code in the past, it can be very similar. But if you haven't, it's actually very relatively easy. So you just want to make sure you have a compiler installed like GCC. And having uh, also make installed or gmake. But either having those installed will make it a lot easier to compile the source code. If you want to use AppGet or Yum to install those tools, that's perfectly fine. So we're going to go to the downloads folder after we um, download the source code for Ruby and we're going to extract it using tar. So it extracts and uncompresses at the same time. And you go into the Ruby's folder, there's going to be a configuration file. So we're going to go ahead and hit configure. And then it's going to check all the system settings to make sure that it can be compiled on the local system. And then we're going to run make, which is going to go ahead and build the source code. Um, again, this is where you would need a compiler like GCC to be able to complete that make step. And then as root, so you can do sudo, or if you logged in as root, you're going to do sudo make install, and that will actually add it, um, the compiled files, into your system 
file system. So your system directories such as user local bin. Now let's go ahead and install some of the required gems, Ruby gems, that are required to work with this specific Nagios plugin. And they're all cloud related. So we're going to install gem install fog. And this is a cloud infrastructure gem that will allow us to work with um, any cloud kind of service. And same thing with cloudy script. These again are to be able to interact with a cloud API. So and the next one is AWS, which is a specific gem for interacting with Amazon Web Services. So that is how the Ruby base Nagios plugins able to interact with um, the CloudWatch API on Amazon Web Services. So these are relatively installed. Once you have Nagios and Gem the executable installed, you can go ahead and run those three commands to install the required gems. Next, I went ahead and did a gem update system and also a gem install Ruby gems hyphen update. So these might be unnecessary steps, but I went ahead and did these steps and didn't have any issues configuring the Nagios plugin. So now we're gonna go ahead and work with the scripts that we downloaded. The first one is the check file that Nagios will use to actually run the check command. So we're going to copy this over to our Nagios uh, lib executable directory. So I'm going to copy it over. This is the Ruby file. So cloud check watch. And then depending on if you compiled Nagios from source code or install the pre-compiled binaries, uh, that path might be slightly different. So I'll put some alternate path in the comments below if that user local Nagios lib xeexeexe -E is not there. So then once we copy it over, if you go to that directory, you notice all the check commands that Nagios uses to, to monitor the different services are listed there. So they're all green, which um, just denotes it as it has the execute bit set. So I'm gonna go ahead and check into permissions, check the file ownership, Make sure it matches the other um, check files just to make sure there's no problems. Um, you can encounter very basic issues when permissions or file ownerships is not set correctly. So I just take the, always take the time to make sure the file and the permission settings are set correctly. Once that's done, go ahead and log into Amazon's web services and click on IAM, which is Identity Access Manager. And I'm gonna create a user. So this user is going to be able to access the um, CloudWatch API and make sure that checkbox is there that it will generate a access key. So this is the access key. It's an encrypted key that we're going to be using to be able to access um, the CloudWatch API without having to provide a username and password. So don't worry, this file, that encrypted uh, entries will not be used in any file. We're actually going to use a um, Ruby file and actually re-encrypt that so that access key will not be in a clear text file. So that is what we're doing here. We're actually going to use a random public key um, and we're going to have to generate it. So we're going to go ahead and make this folder and we're going to generate a with SSH key gen, we're going to generate a public and private key. And now this file is going to be used with the access encryption file, Ruby access encryption file that we downloaded from the Nagios plugin. So, so we're going to check the permissions here. I'm going to try to with match with Nagios just again for making sure I don't have any issues in the future with file permissions when the Nagios services is running. And now we're going to use the Ruby encrypt credential that we downloaded off the Nagios exchange site, and we're going to provide it with the access and the secret key that we created in Amazon Web Services, and it's going to output it to that ec2 underscore credentials dot com file. So this file has to be set correctly for, a, for us to be able to use the Ruby script to access the CloudWatch API to pull the data of how our instances are performing. So we're going to go ahead and run that command and it's going to create that file. And this is the encryption of the access key and the access ID from what we generated. So again, it's not exactly what we downloaded from Amazon Web Services, but an encrypted version of it. Now we're going to go over to 
user log local nagios and we create a credentials folder in there and this is where i'm just going to store that encrypted access key and um, access id and we're going to store it here because um, the nagios command to monitor the instance will be needing that file regularly to be able to access the cloudwatch api now you have to be sure to check the user you created in Amazon Web Services has the permissions to pull the data you need from CloudWatch. So I'm going to attach a policy to the user that we're going to be using to pull the uh, CloudWatch data with the API. So to be able to attach the policy, now we should be able to run the check CloudWatch status Ruby file and pull the data. So you see how I returned the value there. And that is because that user had access, uh, the user that's associated with the access ID and the access key that Amazon I pulled from Amazon Web Services. Now it's just a simple step of configuring the Nagios files. So if we go into our user local Nagios etc objects files. This is where our hosts are defined and our commands are defined. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of the pre-existing configuration files for a host and we copy it so, so it's less editing. So I'm going to use in this case localhost.conf and create an amazonhost.conf file. So I'm going to go in and edit that. So I'm going to remove most of the services, the groups and that are listed and of course modify the defined host. So I'm going to use, you can use generic server or Linux server as the used um, template. So I, I left it at Linux server I'm going to provide the host name, and this is the host name of the instance. So if you go into Amazon Web Services and you pull out the DNS entry, so it's going to be a very long, long name, and you're going to pull that out and you're going to put it here. So in this case, it's going to start with EC2 and then usually the IP address and some information about the region. You can provide the alias. Again, this is used for um, the Nagios web interface. So I just called it AWS host. So again, you could give it something more specific to what the system does. And then the address, again, it could be the IP address. I put in um, the DNS entry here, but again, it could be either the IP address or the DNS entry. After that, we're just gonna go down here, delete our host server, um, host group, make sure that's deleted. Otherwise you can get a duplicate error when you restart Nagios. And if you go back and look at one of the files we downloaded was a sample service. So this is a template and what it should basically look like to be able to run this service. So we're gonna go ahead and modify this entry and make it similar to our sample entry. Uh, just changing again, maybe the system pass and so forth. So we're gonna use generic service. Our host name is gonna be our EC2 IP address region, that very long entry. And again, you could pull this from your Amazon Web Services interface. Um, I'm going to call the service name. I'm checking the CPU utilization in this case. So I'm going to call it CPU usage. And the command again is from the sample. So that's nice that they provided the sample. It makes it a lot easier to configure this. So we're going to go ahead and copy it from the sample and then modify it. So I did a few different tests with this to get it just right. So again, this will be in the notes below. But I found that this is the what works the best. Again, people have changed. If you look at some of the review notes, people have changed um, how they interact with the API. So you can change that here. So I did the CloudWatch. You provide the instance. So these are the different arguments. And again, these arguments will be defined in the command that we're going to modify next. So we have the CloudWatch command that we're going to define in the command file the instance, the path to the credentials, the matrix, metrics um, title we're using, and the critical and warning percentage. So that is what these, and these arguments will be defined when we go in and modify our command.com file. Once we're done modifying our amazonhost.com file, let's go ahead and go into our nagios.com file and add that as one of the configuration files that should be um, included and the Nagios service. So if you open up nagios.conf, it has a number of configuration files and some of them will be like the command and the template. But if you notice there's gonna be a host and a Linux and a Windows host, um, depending how you personally configure it. 
but there will be a, a section for hosts. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new section for Amazon Web Services right next to that. And these are going to be for our Amazon Web Services instances. So again, it's going to be a very similar system path. You cut and paste that and Amazon host. So this is the same file that we just modified. After that, let's go into our commands.com file. And we're going to go ahead and change, I'm sorry, we're going to go ahead and add a new command. And that's the check cloud command. Um, and if you notice, if you look closely, all the commands are associated with what was located in that lib executable directory. So we're just going to add our check underscore CloudWatch underscore status. And this is going to look very similar to what was on the command line. So Ruby options, Ruby gems, Ruby, the path to Ruby, the path to our Ruby script, and then the arguments. So we're going to do the address, this is the host address, and then our arguments that we specified in the host file. So that's where they're going to be called right here. We're going to restart Nagios. If everything's working correctly, you should be able to go to your Nagios web interface and see our new host listed there. So we, there we have our EC2 instance. You notice it's up. To be able to ping, by the way, you should open up your security group in Amazon Web Services to allow ICMP traffic. And then you should be able to get that ping to be green in your Nagios web interface. But if you click on the host, you'll notice our CPU usage service is now listing and there and it's listing successfully our CloudWatch metrics uh, information about CPU utilization. So once you do that, you know you have successfully configured your Nagios monitoring of your Amazon Web Services instances. And again, we could create, do the same steps again for any of the Amazon Web Services metrics um, options. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you get the most out of your cloud solution by monitoring and making sure your services are up for your end users. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time and subscribe to get updates. Bye, guys.